ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Facing the Music with Terry Oldfield. My name is John Valdivia, producer at idesound.com. This series, curated from candid conversations, will introduce a return to the mystery and wonder of existence, as well as our necessity to confront ourselves. We shall also feature selected pieces from Terry's extensive musical anthology. In this episode, Terry talks about his musical beginnings, the performance of tubular bells at the Queen Elizabeth Hall, his time working for Richard Branson at a Virgin Records store, and his initial struggles in the music industry. Welcome to Facing the Music. Good evening, this is Luke O'Reilly in London. Our Live from London radio concert comes tonight from the Queen Elizabeth Hall and features Michael Oldfield performing his composition Tubular Bells with Mick Taylor on lead guitar. We were all a bit um, out of our depths, really. Obviously, there was Mick Taylor, who's a Rolling Stone on the, you know, with us, and some famous musicians. But it was weird. There was just like, you know, it felt normal. I can't describe it any other way. You know, I remember walking into the Queen Elizabeth Hall foyer and seeing all the signs and sit down and have a cup of, cup of tea or something in the cafe there. There was no real sense of we were arriving by the stage door, you know, special. There was nothing special about it. It was just, it was very normal because there was no big deal about it in those days. It was just another another thing that was happening. I didn't see Mike as a as a star, or and we had um, people wandering in and out of the shop who were who were you know band members and people who were you know they'd stop and have a cup of coffee in the staff room with us and all sorts of people wandering in and out. It was just like normal. There was no distance between the stage and the audience in those days. You didn't have that. I remember doing the BBC live Tubular Bells in the round studio. I don't remember being nervous or anything, and everybody was very, you know, intent on getting things right. There were cameras everywhere, but I didn't feel nervous. I just felt part of the gang kind of thing, you know. I didn't really have anything difficult to play, you see. All these other guys had all these notes. But it was nice to be included in the whole thing. It sort of boiled down to not having any money. When I played at the Queen Elizabeth Hall, I got paid musicians' union fees, just like anybody else. So it wasn't like I was paid a vast amount of money. I just got paid my, my session fees, just like everybody. That wasn't very much. When I was working for Virgin, I was being paid £20 a week. I mean, even Mike was getting £20 a week when he was top of the charts. He also was getting his royalties and stuff. You know, it was just this thing Richard had about everybody has to be paid the same. 
It was an interesting scenario because Richard was driving around in his Bentleys and things, and uh, I don't think he could afford those on £20 a week, but <laughs> that's what we got. Looking back, I see that as an unfolding inevitability. You know the expression, it's all in the can, and then it just needs to unfold. It's like the path is, is laid out, you're asked to walk it. If you think you know the way better than the path itself, you run into trouble. There was this period where I really didn't accept responsibility for that. I thought that I was in control and I had to, I was not making the right decisions and I had to do this and I was making plans. And I used to throw the I Ching every day, sometimes three times a day, <laughs> if I didn't get the right answers. That's the sort of common state of humanity, where you really feel like, I know what's supposed to happen, and Yi Ching's not agreeing with me, for God's sake, you know. It's not agreeing with me, so I can't actually move ahead until I get the agreement. And the same with having um, mentors or gurus or whoever, that you need their permission before you can take your step forward. So I was lost in that quagmire at the time, although I had some sort of clarity on a deeper level, I was still in the ebb and flow of reactivity. It doesn't matter what the trigger is that creates the reaction, we tend to think we know what the trigger is, so we look for reasons for the way we feel. So I was feeling like a failure because I was measuring up against my brother. I was measuring up against other people in, in the music world, Virgin Records, you know, other people. They were doing things that I couldn't do. And I felt like, well, I should be doing that. But then some inner guidance made me just pick up the flute and get good on it. Because until I had that tool, until I really say, well, I can play the flute, I'm confident now that I can play the flute. I don't have to convince anybody else, only me knowing I can pick up that and I can use that as a means of expression. It started with when I started doing film work because I could put the headphones on in the studio, go out there and look at the screen and put a top line in that worked. It was almost first time every time. That gave me the confidence. All I was doing was responding to the stimulus of the, of the images and also taking into account what the producers wanted and all that. But I remember working in the studio in London with Lawrence Moore on this programme. Lawrence Moore was the co-producer of the film Reflections with Keith Critchlow. It's very nice and, and Mike wrote a very nice score for it. It's very um, deep, the concept behind it. Watching that film actually was quite a... Um, a momentous thing for me because I, I started to see the world as a reflection and through my relationship with Keith Critchlow who came up with the film it sort of deepened my connection with reality in the sense of knowing that it isn't real 
everything happens here and everything out there is a reflection of that. And, um, and he was convinced and convinced me. You, you only have to be convinced that something is so and it is so. Thank you for listening to Facing the Music. We want to extend our gratitude for your company today. For enriching context and further insight into our series, do visit iTheSound.com slash Terry. We have provided all the pertinent information in the description. For those interested in delving deeper into Terry's compelling journey, his biography, Only Now, is readily available on all major online bookstores. It is an intimate and insightful account of a life dedicated to music and spiritual awakening. Lastly, please visit terryoldfield.com to stay up to date with Terry's latest endeavors. Once again, thank you for your time. This is John Valdivia from iTheSound.com. <laughs>